Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and for the past few months, uh, Steve Donahue and I have been uh, having an ongoing uh, buddy read or read along series. Um, and uh, for three months, we've been uh, reading books together. We read uh, Bride's Head Revisited, we read a graphic novel, uh, Batman The Dark Knight Returns, and then uh, The Iliad, which is a an, an annual. Uh, reread for Steve. I've read it a few times and it's been a blast for me. I, it's been uh, so much fun uh, reading these books and not only thinking about um, what I would want to say in a video, but uh, reading them uh, slowly and uh, carefully, uh, concentrating on a, a quarter of the work uh, to make uh, as best as I can um, uh, thoughtful videos or a good representation of um, my thoughts of the books in a video. And having uh, Steve Donahue in mind while I'm reading and thinking about what I want to say. He's a professional reader and a professional uh, book critic and uh, book uh, editor, th things like that. And so I really want to have um, my, my uh, focus hat on while I'm reading these things. Um, it's just so much fun. And uh, we both want to carry on. And um, we made a decision for the month of uh, July. And I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you what I have, but um, it's another graphic novel. And this time I went to my local comic book shop, which I used to go to when I was a little kid. My older brother collected comics and my dad collected comics. Um, I used to go there for uh, the action figures and um, novelty uh, things and uh, maybe a comic or two, but I never got into actually reading comics. I, I found it uh, confusing and convoluted. They had these long story arcs and um, I suppose when, when you start um, catching tread, um, reading these storylines and getting involved, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it just turns into um, a wondrous world of superheroes and supervillains, um, but it, it never caught for me. Um, my brother was uh, very involved. He would uh, every month wanted to go to the comic book store and uh, he collected them, so he would read them, uh, but wanted to keep them in pristine condition. Put them in those plastic sleeves and um, those oddly specific archival white cardboard uh, backings that you would put them in, and he had those uh, caskets, those uh, comic book um, uh, coffin-like file folders that you would carefully organize all of your comic books with, and when my brother bought action figures, he never took them out of the box, and uh, he would blow a gasket every time I ripped open one of his uh, action, action figure um, um, plastic boxes. and things like that. And um, Steve and I decided, I'll, I'll show you uh, the bag. <laughs> so it's a uh, free comic book day, uh, the first Saturday in May. So we're still using these bags. It's the same comic book store, uh, but a different location. It was huge. It was like a warehouse and you'd walk in, you walk in, and just see um, boxes and boxes, like just this huge file room um, with those uh, sliver thin uh, comic book issues just piled in. Uh, and it just looked like it went up to the ceiling and it was throughout the whole store and all over the walls. They had the comic book paraphernalia and the posters and game boards and all of the new releases um, and it was fairly populated there, there were a handful of people in there um, fingering through um, all these old comics and 
uh, different things like that I was looking for. So uh, the books, the graphic novel that Steve and I uh, agreed upon Batman, Year One. And so this is another Frank Miller uh, creation. It's Frank Miller and David uh, Mazzuccelli with Richard Lewis. I don't know if this comes um, after uh, The Dark Knight Returns in terms of uh, publication date, uh, but Steve and I were talking and he said, um, we first started our, our graphic novel endeavor, at least for me, with um, Batman The Dark Knight Returns, which was enjoyable and had a lot of specific kinds of merit, but ultimately um, fell apart for me. And um, there's no other way I could think about it. It, it, was, a, it was a disappointing reading experience thinking of the work as a whole. Now Steve says that he wanted to make it up for me, make it up to me, and offer up uh, a really good Batman story. Um, I have some reservations that were back to Frank Miller. Uh, from the little I understand, he uh, sort of reinvented the character. I, I was I imagined that it would be more of a classic take. I'm not sure. Um, I will say my expectations are a little bit lower, but I'm not dismissing it. I don't have um, uh, enough to cast any sort of um, useful or meritous um, judgment. And so um, the first one we read was Batman The Dark Knight Returns, and this is... Um, sort of a wizened, older, jaded, um, nihilistic uh, Batman, putting the cowl back on, coming out of retirement. This is uh, what, I, what I think, uh, because uh, I don't do any sort of research when I make videos, but uh, I think it's in the title, Batman Year One. This is going to be uh, Batman's first year as a superhero and as the caped crusader and uh, being um, inexperienced and um, see seeing what, what, what he learns and uh, the pratfalls that he has and um, how, how he makes enemies, uh, how he ends up creating his rogues gallery. All sorts of interesting things. Uh, the one thing I know I will not be disappointed with is the artwork. The artwork in Dark Knight Returns um, from start to finish um, was incredible and just masterfully done. Um, it was an engaging and added a, a real substantive element to the storytelling. It wasn't just words and pictures. The, the whole thing um, elevated the, 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 the color and the composition and um, everything about The Dark Knight Returns um, uh, visually added to the story. So I expect that with this. While I was at um, the comic book store, the um, the clerk uh, was was helpful, uh, but uh, I, I did have some uh, issues with my customer service. Uh, I, I walked in, I said, uh, you know, I'm sort of lost in here. Um, I'm looking for two things. I'm looking for uh, Batman Year One, and he immediately goes, oh, we don't have that. Finally, he takes me over to the section and he goes, oh, turns out, turns out we do. So, uh, good, we found Batman Year One. Um, would have really put uh, um, a crank in the gears or a wrench in the gears uh, for the read-along. So, uh, good. The other thing is I asked uh, Steve if there was uh, a really great 
classic Superman graphic novel because uh, Superman has um, more than an appearance. He's uh, qu quite involved in the last third of uh, The Dark Knight Returns um, in, a, in a way that is not how I've ever envisioned Superman. And so I wanted to read a graphic novel or a comic book that showed off uh, why Superman is really great. And Steve uh, even said, if they have it, uh, Superman, um, and what was it called? Um, whatever happened to the man of tomorrow? He said that would be well worth your time. And they didn't have that one. We checked, the, the clerk um, really did spend a lot of time with me and uh, going going through uh, their, their collections and looking. They didn't have it. And so I said, I'm, I'm just looking for a, a great classic um, Superman graphic novel to read. And he goes, ah, here's one. And it was called, I don't, I don't remember, but it was like Superman, uh, the Red Sun. And he goes, this one is where Superman uh, uh, leaves Krypton, however he leaves Krypton, and instead of li uh, landing... Uh, in Smallville in the United States, he lands in the Soviet Union. And so this is a, a different iteration of uh, what would have happened if Superman um, uh, was uh, landed, had landed and raised uh, in the USSR as a different emblem and a different look to him. And I said, well, that's sort of like an alternate universe. Is there maybe like a a typical Superman graphic novel. And he goes, ah, the death of Superman. And I, I go, well, b b before he goes dying, is, is there a Superman graphic novel where he's just having adventures, just flying around, um, doing uh, good, having daring do and things like that. And he goes, ah, uh, Superman, versus Shazam. And I said, well, that's great. He's fighting another superhero and they're gonna have big epic battles, I'm sure. But how about him flying around um, fighting evil villains? Uh, and I'm not even quite sure for as much, for as iconic as Superman is, I'm very limited in what his rogues gallery is. I know about Lex Luthor. I've heard about uh, Brainiac. I don't know what Brainiac is, but I've heard of it. Um, there's a dark side. But who who is he fighting? That this person that is, has unlimited power and is invulnerable and uh, super strong and can you know handle anybody. Who, who who's really challenging Superman? I don't know. And f finally, the guy goes, well, it's kind of hard. They, they have these uh, long series of comic books, but not really uh, self-contained story arcs or something like that. They, they had shelves, the, the way that I, what you can see here, shelves of Superman. And he goes, yeah, I'm not really sure. I would have picked one. But they were expensive. I, I I don't think that they're. I'm not. I don't think that they're overpriced for what they are, but um, too expensive for me to start taking chances. Um, Twenty or thirty dollars a pop to see whether or not I like it. I'm, I'm I'm not doing that. If they had the one Steve recommended, that would be a different story. But I got two other um, uh, things at the comic book store, and. When you're at a comic book store, at, at least uh, from my uh, childhood experience, you always get baseball trading cards. And for Steve, I thought I would get the Red Sox. So uh, for a dollar, I got these. And I did a pre-slice so I could open them up for you. And they come with, uh, where is it? Oh my god. Bubblegum? They've broken, <laughs> it's 
broken slice of just unwrapped uh, bubble gum. That cute, like glaucous white white powder, uh, which I would have uh, chewed and swallowed when I didn't know any better. And let's see what we have for uh, Ellis Burks. He looks like he swings a bat. Uh, Gary Gaetti, something like that. Uh, Tom Browning. <laughs> uh, look at this guy, uh, Greg Booker. And they're different teams. Are they all different teams? Okay, so they're not all Red Sox. What do I know? Uh, but these are going to be bookmarks. Uh, for a dollar, I just got a whole stack of bookmarks. Amazing. And the last book I'll show is for my niece. And uh, I was so happy when I saw this. And it's uh, Snoopy to the Rescue, a Peanuts collection uh, by Schultz, uh, Charles Schultz. We have Snoopy and this is a collection of the old uh, Sunday uh, Sunday newspaper, uh, the funny papers, the Sunday comics. Um, they've colorized them. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just think it's uh, a great thing. I'm, I'm going to read it before I give it to my niece. But um, yeah, there's Snoopy in a little wading pool. Where does he go? Ah, this is the life. This is where I belong. And he goes, Muscle Beach. <laughs> so he shows off his muscle. <laughs> uh, yeah, and all the other characters. It's amazing. I can't wait. The other thing that has not been lost on me, maybe two things. One is we're at the middle point of the year. So I, I've had a... a half a year's worth of uh, reading so far and um, uh, up until now three months of those six half of the year so far I've had uh, read-alongs with uh, Steve Donahue so it's been a uh, <clears throat> Steve centric uh, year it's been amazing um, I thought I would show or share just some of the things that I've read this year, most of which I've made videos on. I haven't made videos for every single thing that I've read, but um, I haven't read, I feel like I haven't read as much um, as some years that have gone by, but I'm really happy uh, with what I've read so far. Um, uh, the Robbers by Schiller, A Hundred Years of Solitude, which I didn't really care for. Um, the Books of Livy. I've been reading Livy on and off uh, throughout the year, a couple books at a time. Uh, I haven't uh, made videos about it. I, I um, had an idea of just making a video for every book, but I'm so ill-equipped to... to in any way um, be interesting or articulate um, on a subject that I'm uh, really a beginner at and I, I, I kind of dropped it. I've, I've been reading it uh, and enjoying it. Um, the Cossacks by Tolstoy, Tristana by Benito Perez Gatos. Um, if I could find more English translations, um, I will happily read them. I thought that was a terrific, entertaining novel. Uh, the Poem of the Fid, another um, kind of great epic of uh, Spanish uh, literature. Uh, Vera, or The Nihilists, by Oscar Wilde. The Castle, by Kafka, one of my favorite um, novels by Kafka. Uh, Clarissa, which I gave up on. I read about a third of it, and I, I don't imagine I'll go back to it. I, I feel like I had enough. Um, a whole bunch of short stories by Donald Barthlemy, one of my favorite short story writers. A whole bunch of stories by H.P. Lovecraft, uh, which was new to me. I hadn't read anything of his, of his uh, before. 
and it was hit or miss. Uh, some things were uh, fantastical, and um, the, the imagery was uh, um, evocative, and the language was sumptuous, but it didn't always work for me. I also, I've read a ton of Ernest Hemingway short stories. Uh, then Brideshead Revisited with uh, Steve Donahue, uh, Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne, uh, maybe my favorite uh, novel of the year, just a thrill ride. Absolutely loved it. Pure entertainment. Uh, Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. And then The Dark Knight Returns, and uh, one, one, one of the things, like one of those um, effects of um, um, going outside of your comfort zone, being adventurous in reading, um, uh, doing it all of, all, all of it in a public way and sharing that reading with uh, um, a booktube colleague, is I discovered Michael K. Michael Vaughn, or I think Michael K. Vaughn, another uh, booktuber, uh, new to me, I'm not sure how long he's had a channel, um, quickly, almost immediately became one of my favorite um, YouTubers or booktubers, someone that uh, talks to the screen about the things that they're reading. Um, he's incredibly engaging on the camera, just uh, comfortable, um, natural. There's a, always sort of like a, a, a wink of irony or um, a little bit of humor uh, in the act of presentation, but uh, everything that he talks about is so interesting. And he has the um, the formula that I try to emulate. Steve Donahue does so well, and um, uh, Jason, uh, I can't remember the name of Jason's channel at the moment. Uh, well, it's, it's one take. It's, it's someone in, in front of a camera who can um, just speak engagingly uh, for a long stretch of time. The idea of speaking in paragraphs. Uh, one of the reasons I try to do that myself is um, to work on my own public speaking skills and to work on how do I articulate um, in, a, in a thoughtful way um, longer ideas. And Michael K. Vaughn does that uh, just superbly. Um, and his reading tastes. He reads uh, the classics and he reads comic books and um, there's a whole wide variety and talks about them all with the same interest and passion um, th that you want. Just reading is great and um, Another another new booktuber to, to me that um, does that very well uh, talks about why reading is great. Uh, what was I saying? Um, the Waves by Virginia Woolf, The Iliad, and I was reading The Iliad side by side with the first book of um, The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, um, which I learned is not a trilogy. M maybe the single most like mind-blowing fact I've learned this year. Uh, it's been a long time uh, for the, the, the things that I feel like I know really well, uh, literature. It's been a long time where I've been like genuinely uh, shocked by something. Um, I'm very aware of what I don't know or Get, get things wrong and things like that, but uh, I took it for granted. The Lord of the Rings is a trilogy. They, they have a movie that's a trilogy. Uh, everybody talks about the Fellowship of the Ring and the Two Towers and the Return of the King, and then other bits around that, The Hobbit or the Cimmerillion. Turns out it's one big book that was published and then later split into three. That solves a lot of the quandaries that you might have uh, finishing the first book and thinking like, well, it doesn't really end. It, it, it's because you're only, you've only read the first third of the book. Uh, when I learned that, it changed my uh, 
my reading since then because I was gonna maybe go back to it, read something else. Knowing I've only read the first third of a book that I'm enjoying, uh, I just been, I've been carrying on reading the Two Towers right now and loving it. Um, I'll talk about that later, I guess. Um, and then other other things, uh, Farewell to Arms and The Hobbit and um, some Voltaire, a handful of Voltaire short stories already. I started the Aeneid, um, which I will be reading in uh, July, but um, like I said, I switched uh, back to uh, Tolkien for the uh, Two Towers. Um, and um, that's a really substantial good representation of what I've read this year. I've um, read a bunch of other things, but I, I feel pretty good about that. Um, um, I'm looking forward to um, more read-alongs each month with uh, Steve Donahue, as long as he's up for it, I'm up for it. And anyone else, like I said, uh, Michael K. Vaughn um, just decided um, that the Batman Dark Knight Returns sounded fun and he joined in and started making videos. Uh, everybody is welcome uh, to join and make videos. I, I know uh, Steve always kind of says the more the merrier. Um, and so uh, this is a reading announcement video. So uh, for next month, for the month of uh, July, we'll be reading uh, Batman Year One Frank Miller, David Mazzuchelli with uh, Richard uh, Richmond Lewis, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, I'm looking forward to the whole rest of the year um, reading great books and talking to you about them. <laughs> uh, so, um, sort of an announcement, uh, my time at a comic book store uh, some of my thoughts on what I've read as a whole for the year, and uh, I've made a very long video. So if you're watching, thank you. Uh, leave a comment if you would like, and take care.